to see if I can. Let's go. So hello everyone, it's Harvey D and I'm back for yet another video and I hope you guys are having a great time and welcome back to my channel, to my new subscribers and my old subscribers. I have a video for you guys today and it's an interesting one because of the title. So for some reason, an American, <laughs> well, he's a Caucasian American. I think he lives in the Philippines and he has this video called 12 ways the Philippines is better than America. So when I saw the title, you guys know I don't do videos like this. I wanted to, I just, you know, stepped away from it because as an American, I know, like, I'm happy to be an American. I'm proud to be an American. I'm humbled, let's put it that way. And I wouldn't want to change my nationality for any other nationality. I'm just saying. So, I want to see this video. Look, I, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to go to prison for it. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm David DiMuzio. I'm Rachel Hemphill. I was born and raised in the U.S., but I've spent a lot of the last 10 years living in and visiting the Philippines. So I was also born and raised in the States. My mom is Filipino and my dad is American. I moved here about one year ago, and I've kind of noticed a lot of things that I really love here compared to the U.S. So today, Rachel and I have compiled our top 12 things that we like better about the Philippines okay. compared to the U.S. And they're going to kind of progressively get more important as we go. But I'll start with a pretty simple thing, and that is the music in taxis. I have discovered so much music that I love in taxis in the Philippines. People ask me where I get my ideas for my Filipino song covers that I do on YouTube, and it's actually in taxis. I hear different Filipino songs come up, and actually a lot of American songs. One of, for instance, uh, the song that I now love that I never heard in the U.S. is the song For the First Time by Kenny Loggins. I never okay. heard it in the U.S., even though he's an American artist. Also, Honesty by Harem Scarum is one of my favorite songs, and I never heard that except in the Philippines. The first thing I've noticed since I've been here is when I go out to eat at restaurants, okay. specifically Filipino restaurants, um, everyone orders family style. So what that means is we order like five or six dishes and then everyone just shares that. But in the US, it's not common to do that. So if you go to a restaurant in the US, you get the menu, you pick what you want, and then when the food comes, you just eat that. But like no one's really supposed to like eat, eat your food. food. <laughs> yeah. But even when you're out with friends, oh. it doesn't even have to be family. But like it's just so nice that you're sharing. It's just a different kind of vibe rather than just being like kind of closed off and I don't know, it's different. But Okay, I can I can see what she meant by family style. Oh, well, if she's saying that it's not only in the Philipp... The way people order in the United States here in America is not... That's not the only way that Americans order. And I want you guys to know something also. Other countries do that too. So she saying that it's just only Americans that order... You order something specific. Huh. In America, there are people that are vegans like me, I'm vegan, there are vegetarians, there are you know, people that eat meat and all. So with that, of course, if you order a family style, for someone like me that does not eat meat, um, how would I eat the food that everyone in the family is eating? My mom eats meat, I don't eat meat, my sisters eat you know, so of course, it's good that the menu is specialized. I don't see anything wrong with that, so having the family style, that's kind of cute. But in the United States, we all know that everywhere in the world, you know that it's not everyone that has their families with them. So, of course, if I'm to go out now, I won't call my friend all the way from the other side of Boston to come for us to go out and then with other family style, you know. And she is vegetarian, her mom is not. So, of course, I prefer that way of ordering because it helps when you go to a restaurant and there is a choice for you. I don't think that's a bad idea to... The way you eat also relates to a lot of other things in the culture. So the number three thing is that the Philippines is a lot less Sioux happy than the U.S. 
And I really like the vibe that that brings to everything. There's a lot more freedom, honestly, that I feel on a day-to-day -day basis in the Philippines because of that lack of worry about somebody is going to sue you. To give you an example, we just went outside and we're shooting a music video. Okay. And we just, just hired some random dude's scooter paid him 200 pesos and like we could never do that in the u.s it's no true no no people would be so worried yes it's true this situation yes and it's not just <laughs> i'm sure because he's a caucasian american and i'm an african american so it's like um yes regarding the suit yes uh, there, it's like suits i do get it like i cannot just go out and shoot my videos because um someone can call the cops on me because of my maybe skin color or because of what i'm doing on the street so i do get it but then again the united states imagine 50 countries in one country so you're dealing with 50 countries yeah it not just a country with states but each of the states is more like a country it's like so i can see that they had to do things in order to make it work um um you would get hurt okay and and so I think that there's like this sort of yes, wild west the swing, I, feeling to the Philippines I guess and like that. a less too happy environment. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. The fourth thing that I've noticed since being here is that people are much friendlier to me compared to when I'm in the U.S. I have a little bit of a Filipino look, so maybe they gravitate towards that. But it's just so easy for me to talk to people here and meet new people and make friends. Like everyone seems to be so friendly to me. Uh, yeah, I think generally Filipinos are more friendly to foreigners than Americans are to foreigners. Mm. So for instance, if you're a random dude from Zimbabwe or whatever, yeah. and you like go to a party in the U.S., like a barbecue, and you're like the dude from Zimbabwe who just visited, I don't think people would really go out of their way to talk to you. They'd just mm. be like, oh yeah, that's the dude from Zimbabwe who's here. Yeah. Versus like, here, I feel like people would go up to that guy and go, oh, you're, where are you from? You're from Zimbabwe? Like, oh. oh, what's it like there? Why did you visit the Philippines? They, they'd be a lot more interested mm. in, in you as a foreigner. Okay, um, I, okay, I, oh, okay, okay, so now, when it comes to the U.S., we have the North, the West, the East, and the South, so each part of the states have different mentality and different attitude, like in the South, I know it's very, they said it is very, very welcoming, but it is racially divided in the sense that if you're black like me, you, there are places you go to and someone can, you know, be scared and shoot you we are having that situation right now so i can see what he's saying and i think it's the having the oh you're funny now so why did you come from zimbabwe and all that i think i get it because in the philippines i don't think they have lots of diversity when it comes to people visiting maybe that's why but yeah in the united states we have so many people like many immigrants you know so of course with that they're used to oh that's a black person oh that's a white person oh that's a you know asian person oh that's an asian american that's a you know caucasian american that's an african american that's a you know so i think they're used to when you go down the street especially in new york once you walk down the street you're seeing different ethnicities different races walking down the street so they're used to it and and why you're there is much more friendliness in that way. Yeah. Okay, okay. number five is one that, that Rachel has not yet discovered, but I told her about it, and I think she's going to be very happy now. Okay. And that is 50% off bake sales at closings at bakeries in the Philippines. No! In the U.S., there are no 50% no, bake sales not. at closings. I've never come across one, at least, in my entire life. But in most of the bakeries in the Philippines, especially a lot of high-end bakeries with oh. delicious baked goods, at closing, Usually about an hour before, they have a 50% off. Oh, okay, so that's that the is entire store is 50% off, and it's so cheap and delicious. So I would go and just load up with like a giant. Oh, uh, okay. So he's one of those that like. Okay. Yeah, see, I've been here for almost one year, and <laughs> I don't know that. that in my entire life. Like I love bread, I love desserts, I love cakes, like all that stuff. Okay. And I've never seen like. 50% uh, sale. Yeah. That's really crazy to me because they would not. Okay, now when we are looking at it this way, um, in the United States we have over 350 million people. In the Philippines they have one 104 million people. So if you're looking at that 
ratio of people yeah if they do 50% sales Jesus Christ woo honey some businesses will go they'll go out of business but that's a great concept I would say it's a great concept um he's a foodie he likes them cheap things so of course it makes sense for someone like me right I'm vegan so I don't eat those stuffs so for me I would not have a lot of choices even a vegetarian may or might have some choices so you have to look at the person's lifestyle that's what I'm saying you don't judge a whole country based on one person's past you know perceptive Never or perspective States, but, but that's a great all the food was like really old or just yeah, like yeah, that yeah. to expire like, exactly. you don't see that so okay. now that I know that I definitely have to go and Check that out. Okay, so, so now will that help the business if people go to me, and shop only at that time? Some chain restaurants from America are much, much better in the Philippines. So, for example, yes. um, I love Chili's okay. restaurant, and in America we would go all the time, but it started to just go really downhill. The food wasn't good, the service wasn't good. But then I came here, and it was like the service was so amazing. People were so friendly, so attentive. <laughs> And then you got your food quick, it was hot, it was, you could tell everything was fresh. Like, it really surprised me because you would think that if it's a chain restaurant, it should just be exactly how it is in the U.S. But here, it's like a hundred times, a hundred times better. Yeah, so another one for me that's mm. the same is actually Starbucks. So in the U.S. Oh my god. Oh my god. Mm. <sighs> okay. You see what I'm saying? She is now basing this stuff based on her experience. But I do get why she said that way, that if she goes out and then the food is not fresh, especially Shane restaurants. I don't know anything about... I've worked in a Shane yes, restaurant I and... Go to Starbucks, and I definitely would never go to Starbucks. It was not like that me. when I was I working there, so... having my lunch at Starbucks, yeah. right? But here in the Philippines, I eat at Starbucks almost every other day. The food at Starbucks is awesome. And it's all different. It's actually Filipino... Don't you like cooking? Starbucks. So one of my favorite desserts in the world is banofi. And Starbucks has awesome banofi, which is also a Filipino dish. Starbucks in the Philippines is much better. And it's actually run by a Filipino company. It's not run by Starbucks America. So that's why Starbucks in the Philippines way better. Oh, Number seven, okay. fairly obvious if you've had them, and that is mangoes. Mangoes in the U.S. are not even particularly good, and here they're absolutely delicious. I could eat them every single day at every meal. And in the U.S. they're actually very hard to find. Okay, the eighth thing for me is movie theaters. If okay. I'm just looking at the reasons why they feel that the Philippines is better than the United States, than America. I like using the word United States. I don't know why. I've always used that, so I'm used to it. Okay, so I'm just looking at the reasons why. There are other things that makes the United States, America, exceptional. So, hearing this, I'm like, oh, that... He, he is... I think he's someone that needs picks things for him to see this stuff as the reason why the Philippines is better than the United States. States. I'm looking at other. Um, you'll probably know that it's really expensive and you can't buy snacks because they're really expensive. Just for a box of popcorn is literally ten dollars. It's uh, for a drink that's five dollars. It's so a developed country. Already almost a thousand pesos, like gone wow. just for snacks like people it's a developed country in so snacks, whether yeah. it's in your purse or like in your jacket like, like, in your pocket yeah but here in the philippines uh, movie tickets are really cheap and the food and the popcorn and everything is really cheap and you don't even have to buy it at the movie theater you can walk in with your food with literally whatever you want and yeah. they don't care that's nice now she's saying this right when it comes to standard of living, it makes a lot of sense. The income she makes in the United States is completely different from what she will make there in the Philippines. So if you're putting it based on your income, 
it makes a lot of sense why things are on the expensive side because she can be looking at it as you know when you exchange the money from maybe one dollar to pesos it's now different when it comes to quantity so of course she will see it that way but if she's not looking at it based off on exchange rates it is it is it makes a lot of sense so but the idea that they can go in with their food that's nice some people here actually smuggle their food in i never go you know so i can see but you know in the united states we don't have the problem of piracy but most third world countries have that problem of piracy like the movie will be coming out on friday and last monday the movie is already out in a different country you see so with that you're not helping the cinemas there you're actually stifling them so here i love the movie theaters I go to way more movies when I'm in the Philippines. For yeah. sure. Did you ever notice that some movies come out here first as well? I did yeah, notice that actually. Like a lot of movies come out here first. Yeah. yeah. See what I I'm saying? I saw Bohemian Rhapsody and all my friends in the States we were like, what? You already saw it? <laughs> like it came out, I think it was just one day earlier. Oh, okay. But I don't understand it's... why I'm sure there's some reason. Well, we are a day ahead here. But yes, that makes a lot of Number sense because nine, people like to open country. out there, people then bring it back home. That so still has a significant effect on them. And I'm not going to talk about this to brag at all. This is something that makes me happy. I find that there are a lot of ways to help people in the Philippines that make me feel really good and also really helps them. And it's, it's, it doesn't cost a lot, and it's not difficult and difficult to find. So in the US, uh, for instance, if I was to go up to someone on the street who had like a difficult job, you okay. know, a street cleaner or something like that, and hand them $20, it really would make no difference. And they'd almost be like, like why are you giving me 20 bucks? Like, you know, it's nothing. Like, yeah. but here in the Philippines, that depends there on the are person. So many homeless people and so many people in difficult positions. I actually give out a lot of cash on the street. It just makes me feel good. So almost every single day, okay. When so I'm I, um, somewhere, I'll see a person that's working out. A lot of times, it's recycling, and they're going, they're digging through the trash, and they're finding the bottles to be able to recycle them and, and have money. And so I'll have a thousand pesos in my pocket, which again is only like twenty bucks. But you see the difference? Pesos and their face lights up and you can tell that it's instantly made. Because when you use a thousand pesos back in the Philippines, it's you can get more for it. You're comparing in a developing country and a developed country. Of course there are differences. You know, machineries, equipments, um, standard of living, style of income, payments, you know. So looking at the exchange rate, you see he said $20 is equal to 1,000 pesos. Income you make in the United States, if you go there, it makes you, you're on a whole different level. So it already set, it sets you ahead when it comes to your income. But now when you're in there in the, in the Philippines, the money you make from your jobs that you do here in the States, you would not get the equivalent amount of money you make in the States. So I can see why. And he's saying giving twenty dollars to someone on the street that they would not it's like I said, the standard of living, you cannot it is what it is. But now that's also it balances itself when it comes to the opportunities as an American. The opportunities you get are boundless. And I'm saying that as an African American that like, I just I don't know how to describe it, but there are opportunities to you. It, you all, it helps you. You can you can follow your dreams, and you know you can follow your dreams. You can do so much. I don't feel believe in putting down one country, especially a country you're from, because you enjoy a different country. That's just me because I feel that every country has something that makes them unique. Now he's giving, he's telling me about these giving parties because when he gives that twenty dollars and the person is saying one thousand pesos, he f it makes him feel special. It makes him feel very very important, and sometimes that can stem from. I don't know if I should use this word if it's right, but we call it superiority complex. Where when you give someone something and you see them being down on the floor and thank you, and it, 
it makes that person feel like mm, I just saved that person's life some people have that mentality where I just saved this person's life because if I'm giving someone $20 giving them 1,000 pesos I don't expect them to thank me like oh my god thank you it's like oh my god thank you so much but not like wow you know like I want to see their eyes light up because I gave them that money no I give without expecting anything back that's how it should be so when you have this we call it savior savior mentality savior complex so i can see why he has it that it makes me feel good you it's, see it's just fun to be able to like help somebody so easily and i just so, came with a lot you of hear that on the so I easily to beggars on the street because i feel like there's a lot of uh, corruption and things sometimes in, in that. Okay. But I'll, uh, find kids on the street and I'll just take them to restaurants. So a lot of times I'll go have a meal at a nice restaurant myself and then I'll just walk out of the restaurant, look for some kids, and then just bring them to the restaurant and buy them the same meal. <laughs> and it's really fun. Number 10 is the opportunity to make and create deep and meaningful friendships. So I've only been here for less than a year okay. and I've already made an unbelievable amount of friends and they're all so close to me and they know pretty much everything about me in such a short amount of time. And now that is the American spirit. That is the American spirit because you can be you can be walking like sometimes I'm walking with my guests in the salon and we are just chatting and talking about life. Like we don't we don't keep things closed off like I have meaningful, beautiful relationships and friendships that I've created because we can, we can, we, we don't care what you know our skin color when we are walking, and we just talk about life and just connect on it on so many levels. We have open hands, so they're saying this. It depends on what part of the country they're living. She said Colorado. She's living mostly at the south or the she's living in one of these places that i can see why when you go to colorado uh, north carolina uh, places like that the buildings are so spaced from each other because they have lots of vast lands so of course your buildings are so spaced out that you cannot be neighbors but in the philippines you can see some of the houses are close to each other very much that hey hi you know knock hi you know my mom is from africa so i have that idea that you know you can just go to them hi you know and then it's easy to make friends you, your friends can play around i can see why i absolutely love and cherish but like i have known those people my whole life and it feels like since i've moved here i've already known these people my whole life and it's just that easy and that quick same for me, I have just as many close friends, like lifelong friends, here in the Philippines as I do in the U.S. And I only lived in the Philippines for about two and a half years, and I lived in the U.S., you know, most of my life. People are a little bit more open to allowing you to be a good friend of theirs, and they're, like, looking for good friends. Versus in the U.S., it's like, you find, like, a new good friend every couple of years, maybe. <laughs> really? Okay, I don't know companionship you see it depends on where you live in the states experiences and meeting new people a lot of people in the u.s don't really i want to say a lot of people but some people just don't really think that way they're okay with where they are and they're okay with who they're around yeah so they they don't feel the need to like i guess go out of their way to make so friends with them that, but yeah i think it's true number 11 is cover bands here are in general way better. So well, they create a karaoke, so it makes a lot of sense. Possibly the world's best singers per capita. I mean, there's just ridiculous amounts of great singers. And oh. it is not uncommon at all to walk into a bar or a club here and hear them belting out a journey song. <laughs> you see, it's literally the, sounding They create a like karaoke, karaoke, so. And, uh, that's something that's really difficult to pull off. Okay. Number 12, this more applies to me, I think. Okay. But the drinking age and the nightlife and the night scene okay. here in Manila. So in the US, you cannot drink or go out to clubs until you are 21. Yes. So for me, Which is I'm good. 18. So being here in the Philippines where the drinking age. Did you guys hear that? I'm scared. Age is 18. <laughs> it's 18, so. I can go out, I can In Germany it's also 18. I can go to the clubs. So many countries is 18. I don't do so often, but um, it's really fun and compared to the states, uh, you can't really do that. And also when you do go out to the clubs in the states, they all close around 2 Yes. 2 a.m. Yes. But here in Manila, it's kind of like the city that never sleeps <laughs> of Asia. Um, you well, that is New York. People party until five. Yes, in New York, you party Maybe all day. That's the not necessarily the best thing, 
but it is what makes the Philippines a little bit different and a little bit more fun than the U.S. So Rachel and I had an extra two bonus. So she is upset with the United States for being more responsible and making the drinking age 21? Oh, f Honey, I don't drink, I don't smoke. Uh, and I would say, for me, it works because you don't want drunk driving and killing people, DU DUI, people dying from drugs and stuff. So making that 21, I'm fine with it. That should not have been a reason why. And you're probably thinking, why didn't this already make the list? But we just figured that it was so obvious. Okay. And that is, number one, the beaches. The beaches here, just... So obvious. Yeah, I mean, it's no comparison to America. Literally no comparison. <laughs> What's your favorite? It's a developing country, of course. Oh, I've been... I haven't nice. been to too many places, but I did go to Chargill. Mm. And that is literally unreal like wow. you won't find a place like that anywhere in the states and i know it's you can't really compare because yeah. we're on an island and you know that's you see what i'm saying obvious. but it's so beautiful everywhere i go is so beautiful i do think that the philippines has the best beaches in the world and i've been to thailand to hawaii to i've Australia, been to thailand i've been to macau i've been to china i've been to malaysia i lived in malaysia nice beaches the caribbean i've been all and i've lived in india too yeah, I used to always want to go. Back and I've been to like, Singapore. Why? Like, why do you want to go to Hawaii? It's the same as the Philippines. Yeah. And, like, I just never understood. But after being here and like really seeing the beaches, it is. And Hawaii is here in the states too. Know. You know, Hawaii is the United the States too. So out there. again, quite obvious. We didn't want to add this to the top twelve, but it's just in general true. And that is, that a lot of things are way cheaper yes. in the Philippines. There are certain things that are more expensive, but on sort of like a day to day. Basis. Things that you need. Yeah, especially if you're vacationing. There's very little that when you're on vacation here that wouldn't be cheaper. Hotel rooms, you know. Yeah, I can see. Like, it, yes, that's that makes a lot of sense. Around is eighteen dollars for tonight. No. Eighteen dollars. Yeah. It's a developing it's country. So clean and it's so yeah. nice. In the states, you pay eighteen dollars for a hotel room, <laughs> and you need to like sleep with a guy next to you. I yes, that's. Yeah, you're bad in prison. <laughs> Okay guys, um, now, the reasons that they said why the Philippines is better than the United States, than America, for them, these are the reasons why the Philippines is better than America. As an American, I can see some of the things they said are really like, oh, this is nice, this is interesting, this is okay, this is good, but you also have to know that there are other things a million and one things that makes america america you know guys just like in my head i'm just thinking about them and i'm like ah huh, you know so, so just something tells me that i don't know i can see why you know what the, in, there is a saying that you don't know what you have until it's gone and it's like you've been eating apples all your life then they, someone gave you orange and like oh wow that is amazing you know you so you now start appreciating that orange compared to the apple you have maybe so i think that's why but whew, i love you guys so much let me know what you think as an american am i offended by this video Huh, am I not offended by it? I don't. They made their points, they made their valid, their points that are valid to them. And I would say that um, it's interesting. The points are actually fun, playful. Um, when I'm putting it on a scale of preference, like, oh my god, this is so important to me as an American, most of this stuff that they said are not really important to me. So, yeah. To them, it may be very important to them, you know, but to me, these are not really important to me. Regarding the fresh food and stuff, yes, I see, you know, that regarding the 50% going out to go get 50% and drinking at 18, those are not important to me because I, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I know it, that has always been me and it has, it's good for my health you know so it's not something I'm like oh my god I'm fascinated by that I'm not <laughs> uh, you know what I'll see you guys soon in the next video I love you guys so much <laughs> yeah okay uh. hi thank you